Hey Coconuts and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time joining, I'm Andrea, but you can call me Coco. And today we are talking about coloring digitally. Now you may have seen me in these internet streets throwing down in a coloring book or two, but one of my most frequently asked questions is how do I color digitally? So if you're new here, I actually started my illustration career as a digital artist, and then I transitioned into coloring books and coloring traditionally about two years ago. And today I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I do it. Before we can start coloring digitally, you're gonna need something to color digitally. Another very frequent only asked question I get is do I offer my coloring pages as digital downloads and the answer is yes if you are in the coloring club <gasps> coloring club yes i have a coloring club it's a monthly subscription you get weekly downloads monthly zoom calls discounts early releases exclusives greens beans potatoes you name it i really do enjoy the coloring club and it is such an amazing community the discord is lit if you need something to color just join the club if not there are coloring pages everywhere there's lots of free ones crayola.com actually has a whole library of free coloring pages so there's definitely something out there for you to color but if you want to color a coco michelle illustration go ahead and join the club. So now that you have something to color, here's the technology that I use when I'm coloring digitally. I use an iPad. The one that I have is the iPad Pro. It came out in 2024. I also use the second generation Apple Pencil and the app that I color in is Procreate. It's also the app that I draw in and create all my coloring books. Procreate is not free. It's totally worth the price. But if you are someone who's just dibbly dabbling, there are definitely free apps I'll have listed on the screen that you can take a look at and try it out. A lot of these kinds of apps have a similar user interface. So what I talk through through while I'm coloring a Procreate, you'll be able to transfer into the app that you use and be able to kind of find your way. I will also make sure to list any brushes that I use in the description below, as well as show them on the screen as I use them. I feel like we've covered all the basics there, so now let's get into coloring. This is the illustration I'll be coloring today. This is available as a download in the club, so if you want to get your hands on it, make sure you join the club before January 31st because she will be going away. The first step that I take when I color digitally is to pick a background color. Now, this doesn't have to be the background color that you necessarily end up with, but I think it's really important, especially when you're coloring digitally, to have an idea of what you want the background to look like and then build on top. Because color changes based off of the colors that are around it, having the background color figured out will make it a lot easier for you to build on top of to create a cohesive piece that you like. Now, before you drop in that background color, you're gonna go ahead and change the layer that the coloring page is living on to either a multiply layer. If you change it to multiply, the lines are going to stay black for you. So if you want that like traditional coloring book page with the strong outlines I suggest multiply if you like colored line art then I recommend doing either an overlay or a lighter color layer because then it will be a colored line art and it won't be as harsh as a black line and that's all about personal preference that's up to you girlfriend it is not permanent that's one of the best benefits of coloring digitally is that you can make a lot of changes throughout the process that do not destroy undo set you back like it's really a click of a finger and you are back where you started so just focus on getting in the general vibe of what you want. You can completely change this throughout. You'll see as I color this that I will go through and make adjustments very regularly to get to the color that I want. So pick something that's similar to what you're thinking, but don't overthink it. Layer management and making sure you keep things separate will make it a lot easier for you to make adjustments throughout the coloring process. So just take note as you watch me color on where I'm adding in new layers because that will make a difference in how you go about editing and manipulating it just makes it a lot easier when you isolate layers in a specific kind of way. The next thing that I do is I identify the major blocks of color that I'm going to have on the page. In this one, there's not that many elements to color, which we love. We're gonna have big swatches of skin. We have a little bit of clothes. We have her jewelry and then her hair. What I do is I go ahead and I outline and color fill all of these different areas. Each of those categories will be on their own layer. So skin will have its own layer, hair will have its own layer, jewelry, clothes, etc. As I'm dropping these colors in, I am constantly constantly adjusting. And what I'm using to adjust, I like to use the hue saturation tool to really play around and see what kind of colors I want. Do I want them to be more saturated? Do I want them to be lighter, darker? Do I want them to be a completely different hue? I play around with these throughout the process to see how the colors are interacting with one another. Sometimes when you see the colors together, you'll see, ooh, that really washed her skin tone out, or I really want the background to pop more, so I'm gonna make it a lot darker. You're gonna make those decisions as you go versus when you're coloring traditional where you know you lay it down and you really have very limited options on how to adjust once that layer goes down on the page. Throughout you're going to see me using tools like liquify to make adjustments that allows you to kind of push the paint around on the page. I'm also not like super neat about how I go about it. I'm a little looser. 
matter. I'm going outside of the lines. It doesn't really matter because I can easily touch all of those things up. So you can go ahead and kind of relax and just kind of get the vibe of what you're going for in terms of the colors and how they're speaking with one another. So now that you have all of your base colors down, it's time to start adding dimension. So what I like to do is I start off with shadows. What's gonna make this as easy as possible for you is to get a reference. So I head on over to Pinterest.com. You can use Instagram, Google search, like wherever you get your source of inspiration or pretty pictures, go there and find a picture that has someone in a similar pose with a lighting scenario that you like. This is really going to help eliminate the question of where do I shade? Now, 99% of the time when I'm coloring, especially in my coloring book, ain't nobody thinking about a lighting source. I am here for the vibes, but when I am trying to do realistic lighting scenarios, I am looking at a reference. I don't try and come up off the top of the dome. You know, I have an, a basic understanding of anatomy and I do understand how light interacts with faces to a pretty good degree from drawing for over 15 years, but I still always use a reference. It is not cheating. It is not a sign that you're not a good artist. In fact, that is moving like a true artist. Artists use references. So you get your reference and you take note where are the shadows on the face? In the most common areas, you're gonna see some deeper shadows, eye sockets and under the eyes. You're gonna see a little bit of it, how it interacts on the nose. You're usually gonna get a darker shadow right around this part of the bottom of the nose, right here in between the cupid's bow, under the lip. You're gonna get the contours of the cheekbones. You're gonna see a very strong shadow under the neck most often. And you can also think about, if you're somebody who wears makeup, you could think about it in terms of contour, right? So where do you contour? Around that forehead, you come in under the cheekbone you can do it in the nose you can do it under the lip like it's the same kind of thought process you're literally carving you think of it like you're sculpting every stroke you're just carving away carving away creating that dimension on the face i like to go in with a more subtle shadow at first and build up the intensity throughout so that it has like a more soft gradual look but this is something that i consider to be a personal preference so if you're someone who likes more like that blocky like cell shaded look you can just go straight in with the final color that you want for that shadow and really block it in there. I like it to be a little bit softer, more diffused. So I'm building up, I'm using softer brushes, I'm blending a lot. That's another thing that you can pull up references of different artists or digital artists that you like, see how they do their shading and use similar techniques. So in this video, you see how I'm doing it, but if you like something that's like more an anime style or whatever you're into, definitely look at those as references as well. So once I have the shading in place, I'm going to do the same exact process, except with the highlights. So I'm gonna come through with the highlights I'm gonna find that color that I think is a nice tone. I also use opacity as a tool. So if I lay down some color and I'm like, ooh, these highlights are a little too bright to start off with, instead of just trying to redo the color, sometimes I'll just lower the opacity so it's a lighter wash of color and it's not so intense, but it still gives that highlight. So the digital art process is just like a lot easier to manipulate your piece and you don't have to get it right the first time. You can do it as many times as you need to without having to start over. Now again, you're going to be looking at your reference if you want to know where to highlight, look at your reference. You're going to notice there's usually some brightness right here under the eyes, usually something going on in the forehead, down the middle of the nose. But depending on the angle, like, you know, I have pretty even lighting right now, so it's going to be kind of hard for me to show you different lighting scenarios. But sometimes you're going to have a stronger shadow on one side of the face than the other. Um, you know, in my coloring pages, you'll see a lot of the Rembrandt triangle, where there's like this triangular highlight here, and then everything else is dark than this side of the face. So you're going to look at your reference or references to figure out where those high points are in your specific lighting scenario and apply that to the page that you're coloring. And again, you're going to gradually increase the intensity as you move through the different layers with the last highlights being super bright. I go right in with white. I know it's taboo. You really shouldn't be using a lot of black or white in your illustrations. I do what I want and you should too. I like my pictures to be really vibrant and bright. So I'm going to always reach for like those more orangey terracotta kind of colors when I'm shading. I do like to use light lavender on a multiply layer on top. And again, these are things that are gonna come with time. So just try and kind of play around. And another thing that I like to do is I'll take a little swatch of the skin tone and put it on a new layer and then go back to the hue saturation tool and play around with it. Now this is something that I do on all my digital illustrations where I go ahead and add a canvas layer. So I just have this canvas swatch that I got off of Google search. I put it in and expand it to the size of my canvas. And then I put it on a color burn layer, lower the opacity so that it has a canvasy texture. And I like color burn because the canvas is like an ivory color. So what it does is it kind of de 
deepens all of the colors and it makes it all feel a little bit more cohesive. Again, personal choice. You can do this with anything. So if you wanted to add in a texture of like crumpled paper or you wanted to have like maybe a newspaper print that was like filling the whole thing, you can do this with anything. And then when it goes to the jewelry, the accessories, the clothing, you can really do whatever you want. I went in and added some stripes on the necklace. You can change the colors. I like to add some depth here. So I go ahead and I add a layer on top of what I'm coloring to add dimension and shading. Again, I'm using the tools like multiply to be able to shade across the different colors without having to pick new colors for each color section. You can use, you can use multiply. I like to use either a light blue or lavender to go ahead and add some shading throughout the accessories. And then I come in on top another layer. You can do color add or burn or whatever you're into to go ahead and swatch in some highlights, just adding dimension on top of any kind of pattern that you add in throughout the piece. So this goes for clothing, accessories, etc. Now when I'm doing the hair, especially something as intricate as this, it really is about the details that are going to add dimension and meaning to the piece. There are a lot of little details that you could add in, but I like to think about things in terms of the impact that it's going to have. I don't get super caught up in making it perfect or super neat or very intricate because when you zoom out and you look at the whole picture, there's a lot of things that will get completely lost. I really am just focusing on adding a little bit of dimension by adding some shading along the outside of the braids. And also because the braids actually say 2025, I want to kind of define that number. I don't necessarily want it to jump off where the it's distracting that it says 2025, but I want it to be something that you can read out if you look at it like, oh, this says 2025. So I will add some extra dimension to make sure that there's some depth there where you can make out the numbers. And then I'm going to go and just highlight around the edges to reinforce the shape and make it a little bit more legible as well. And that's it. I'm not going in and adding too much and I'm not gonna go do little microscopic details cause it's not gonna have much visual impact. I like to do the shading process multiple times, each layer one on top of the other, gradually getting deeper. The more contrast you have in your piece, the more depth that you're gonna see. I love that like low contrast, like the shading super soft. Everything is kind of in that same muted color palette, but that's not the way that I actually color. Girl, that's why art tutorials always get me because I just feel like there's so many things that you have to decide that are personal decisions on what you want your final piece to look like. That's why I was like, I don't wanna come on here and tell y'all how to do it. So all I can say is this is how I do it. This is how I do it. And you should be looking at all the things that you can to get a sense of what's tasty to you. You know what I'm saying? What do you like? What do you want your piece to look like? I am here to tell you how I do it. It's not the right way. It's just my way, which usually mean the same thing. <laughs> as a Leo, but I digress. So this is the final piece. This is how it turned out. I feel like a lot of the information will come from just watching me do it. Um, I tried to pop in with any kind of nuggets of knowledge throughout the video to help explain how I do it. And I'm also very mindless when I'm coloring. So it's hard for me to think about what that process looks like. So hopefully I covered everything. If I didn't, please feel free to drop a question down in the comments below and I will get back to you and let you know. Or if there's anything that you want me to do a follow up video to just further clarify, I'll be happy to do so. Thank you guys for sticking around. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.